And uh, good evening. Welcome out to Little Woodrose. Time now to talk Lamar University football. Hi, everybody. Harold Mann along with Coach Pete Rossimondo. We have the Cardinals at home this coming weekend, 6 o'clock kickoff Saturday night, Provo Humphrey Stadium with Mississippi Valley State coming to town. If you haven't got your tickets, get them. you got to go out there and support these guys. Coach, uh, I know you don't like playing them close. And uh, we went out to San Marcos on Saturday, and they score on four plays, up 7 nothing. They score again, <laughs> two-point conversion, eight. And at halftime, it's 18 nothing. But when the final seconds clicked, uh, ticked off that clock, you had the ball with a chance to tie it. We did. And uh, unfortunately, we let the first two quarters go by the wayside, and uh, we didn't do much on, on the offensive side of the ball. If we did, well, I think we would have been, uh, you know, probably, probably talking a different tune today. Let's uh, talk about what you talked about with the guys at halftime. Uh, a lot of times, 18 nothing on the road, FBS opponent, uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. But you guys made adjustments at halftime. What would you talk about at halftime? Because it looked like a brand-new team coming out. Yeah, I would love to take credit for adjustments, but we really didn't make any on offense. We just we simply went in and said we got to get back to the basics and went back to our script, our original script, and came out in the second half, and that's exactly what we started with, exactly what we started the first half with, and, and we went right down the field and scored, you know, and, and we told the defense, we're going to go down and score, and you got to you got to hold them, and, you know, the defense, that I thought after that first, those first two drives really settled in and, and played well, and, and, and like I said, uh, they, they ran to the football as good as any team I've coached uh, as a head coach in 12 years, so if we can continue to do that, uh, we're going to be pretty special on defense. So we got to continue to do that. Robert Coleman, 16 out of 34, 237, two touchdowns. Not bad numbers, but uh, one area you said that needs to be cleaned up. He got sacked seven times. He did. And, you know, two of them were on him for yeah. sure. And, uh, you know, five were on the big guys up front that, you know, we're really lack. I mean, Texas State is, is really good up front. Both DNs, I think, will play on Sundays at some point. Uh, they, they're, they're really experienced on the interior. So we, we, we knew we had our hands full. But uh, when it became a throwing game, it became difficult to keep him upright. But he, he gritted through it, and he made some big plays in the second half and really gave us a chance to win down the stretch. Kalen Griffin had 71 yards rushing, but there were 71 tough yards. Uh, I really liked the way he worked on Saturday. Yeah, uh, and I hope everybody can see the difference yeah. in, in the way he runs the ball right now compared to last year. He's much quicker. He's he's really, really balanced right now. I think he's doing a good job in the pass game, too, as far as protection. So I uh, really feel good about where we're going with him. Damian Moore, it's our, our really our first look at, at him as Lamar fans. He had uh, an 18 yards, uh, and included he had a touchdown. He, I think that guy... He ran over, was looking for his <laughs> license plate number because, uh, and by the way, it's license plate number 28. Uh, he, he, you know, he didn't sidestep that guy. He went right over him and uh, no. went the rest of the way to the end zone. You know, that's what we liked about him because you want to find a compliment to, uh, to, to KG and, you know, a guy that can, that can really, you know, bring some physicality to the game, and he certainly can. And, you know, we got Xavier Coleman, who's a little bit more mm -hmm. of a lightning, and, you know, we needed some thunder. We got, you know, we have Major Bowden, who's a little bit more of a lightning, and, so we really needed a guy that's going to run, run people over, and we brought him in. And he's a super smart guy, uh, really dedicated. You know, he gets along really good with the rest of it. And sometimes that's not always easy coming in, you know, if for, with really one year left and, and having an opportunity to go play. And, and mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you don't get, they don't get accepted, but he did, and he did a really good job of getting himself acclimated to his teammates. Talk about uh, Xavier a little bit. Uh, you know, he's on your depth chart at running back. He's back a part of the kickoff team. Yeah, uh, so versatile, and he could use them in many different ways. Yeah, I mean he's a, he played receiver in, in col at, at Boston College, and he's gonna he's gonna come play some receiver for us this week. And you know, last week he played third, almost exclusively third down for us, and did return kicks. And he's an exciting player, and he's super intelligent, uh, really cares about football. You know, you love those guys that dig in and and watch film and study the scripts and get ready for practice like a pro and feel really good about X. And, you know, we're excited to see what he's going to do at home. Yeah. You know, if home opener, he's gonna, it's going to be big time. I think he's going to light that place up. Looking at the receiving core, Kendon Fusilier, big second half, six reception, 107 yards receiving, one for 41 yards. Savon Ray, two for 50 and a 47-yard touchdown. Uh, Jaden Boyd 
had a nine-yard touchdown reception. Let's go back to Savon. He came here from Texas State. <laughs> he split two defenders on that reception, and once he got by them, there were no way they were going to catch him. No, I mean, two great blocks, Ja'Cory Hyder, uh, Kendon, Kendon, and uh, just, you know, sprung them. And like you said, once he got in the open field, man, he, he was motoring. It was good to see that guy back again, feeling good about himself. And, you know, all of our four of our receivers that played – Really mm-hmm. factored into the game, Isaiah Jones. Uh, yes. You know, uh, you, you know, Jaden Boyd had an incredible catch on a, on an offsides where we threw it up, and man, he just went up and One lost hand, that yeah. guy. And uh, just you know, feel good about where he is too. Robert Coleman, as we mentioned, uh, 16 completions, and he just kind of laid it out there. He spread it out among those receivers. He did, and and you know, he without a um, you know a familiar target in in. Uh, in Devin Gibbs, and, you know, it, it was just good to see him spread the ball around and, and feel more comfortable in the second half with, with the game plan. That's a look at the offensive side of the ball against uh, Texas State on Saturday. Going to get a break in. When we come back, we talk about that Cardinal defense. Well, again, Cardinals uh, dropped the home, they dropped the season opener on the road against FBS Sunbelt Conferences. Texas State, 34-27. They're one of the teams favored to win that Group 5 conference. Go on the road. Matter of fact, the Cardinals had the football as time expired on the 50-yard line with a chance to tie it. On the defensive side uh, for you, Coach, uh, Christian Pugh, local product right here, Beaumont, West Park High School, led the way double digits with 10 tackles. He did. Yeah, Christian played pretty well. I think he'd, he'd tell you he's... he's Going to improve from week one to week two. I know he will. Uh, but, man, yeah, he, he definitely did a good job. And sa- Anytime your safety leads the team in tackles, that's not always great. Right. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Uh, so that means some runs so got get, out to the secondary. That means you're getting to the second level. But so, yeah. uh, he did get him down on the ground, and that's the most important thing for our defense is getting people on the ground. And uh, he did that. And, you know, we had, we had a number of guys step up. And, you know, Cody Martin at corner for his first, uh, really his first start here and playing really well and had an interception and had that fumble. He, he had a strip of a player that. Uh, yeah. And as a matter of fact, what I think what Don, Dewan Lewis picked up that fumble, yeah. if I remember right. So, they, they overturned it, uh, uh, which yeah. is hard to believe. But, yeah. um, you know, I don't know much about officiating apparently. So, <laughs> yeah. I, it looked, I mean, again, I don't know. I, I could comment on it. I know you can't a whole lot. But the receiver caught the ball, turned. Took two steps. Meaning, meaning he made a football move, mm-hmm. and it looked like there was going to be a, a strip and a recovery for the Cardinals. Yeah. But next thing you know, so. I know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Caleb Williams, again, showed up in a, in a big-time way in that game and I think factored in up front a bunch. And, you know, we had some some really good good performances from our linebackers. You know, I think, uh, you know, uh, Hamilton Moore, six, transfer yeah. from Yale, played he had well. six tackles. Tom Mack. Uh, Banda played really, really well. Um, you know, Braden Faulkner, a guy that's been been in the program for now th- going on three years, played well. And Ken Savannah, yeah. you know, a bunch of guys that, that really, you know, we were counting on, and they did a really good job. And then and then our, our, our rover, Ronnie Hamrick, you know, who, again, another Texas State guy going back home yeah. and played really well, had the opening kickoff uh, tackle. Um, so it was good to see him go there and have some success in front of his former teammates. Yeah, and, and you bring up a good point there with some of those guys we're talking on defense because there's times you look at the stats, you say, oh, Christian had, uh, he had 10 tackles, uh, Dewan and Hamilton had six tackles. It's not always about the tackles. No. You know, they, they do so much more defensively to help create defensive plays. Yeah, and impactful plays. You know, we, we want to make sure they do that. And, and you know, uh, 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 you know, Antorius Hambrick had a strip fumble recovery. You know, he played well at times. So, you know, we just – we have to put it all together. And I think – I told the team, usually the, the biggest improvement a team will see is from week one to week two. And and we, we have to really do – we have to cut out the penalties. We have to do a much better – we had 26 missed tackles. We got to do a way better job getting guys down on the ground. And uh, you saw that late in the game. Mm-hmm. We had a couple missed tackles that led to big plays. And – you know, we have to clean that stuff up. Our guys know it. They're focusing on it this week. And, and you know, coming in at home, we want to make sure we put on a good uh, show for our, our home crowd. Got to get our first look at our Australian punter, uh, Chase Leon. He had a 56-yarder He did in that game. He averaged uh, right over 46 yards per punt. 
Uh, tell us about him a little bit. Uh, how's a kid uh, from Australia end up punting for the Lamar Cardinals in Beaumont, Texas? Uh, uh, Johnny Smith uh, from Pro Kick USA. Uh, we know him from when I was at Charlotte, and he, uh, you know, he had a Chase and a couple other guys, and you know, we needed a punter, and we needed a guy that can kick off, and and Chase uh, certainly fit that bill. And I mean, I think he kicked every kickoff with the exception of the last one, which we didn't want him to kick right um, in into the end zone, into the end zone. The first one was eight yards deep. The guy took out. So, yes, he did. Um, you know, we got a weapon in him, and. You know, he's continuing to get me. He's never – the first play of the game was his first play of American football. And uh, so it was – for him, it was a new experience, and uh, he, he settled in nicely for us. And, and uh, he's, he's, a, he's a funny guy to be around. We, yeah, we, I, I we talked to him really in the like hallway him. the other day, and uh, <laughs> he is entertaining. He is quite a character. We, we, we like Chase, for let's, sure. Let's talk about the onside kick. Uh, and, you know, it worked out perfect uh, for the Cardinals. It will recover just – Talk about the process of an onside kick. Uh, obviously, there's several different approaches to the football. Yeah, I mean, the way we do it, you know, it, it, we can send it in either, any direction. And, and, we, you know, we thought we had a better play to the left and with, with Chris Skata kicking it, and he did. And, and he actually recovered it. Uh, yeah. he, he kicked a, a – <laughs> it wasn't the best kick. It was a missile. If it didn't Off hit the guy from mask. Texas State, man, <laughs> yeah. I think that thing was going to be in the second row of the stands. But uh, we, we wound up getting it and, you know, had a chance at the end with a minute left to, uh, you know, to try to go down and tie the game. Uh, Sammy, uh, is he out the first half this coming week? He is, yep, yeah, per NCAA rules, yeah. I mean, it targeting, and again, I couldn't tell, you know, I'm biased, I'm a homer. Yeah, I'm going to say it was a shoulder, but uh, I, I didn't really, couldn't really tell on the replay. Yeah, I mean, we, we – We've exhausted every opportunity to try to get the appeal and all that, and it, you know, it, 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 it held up, and you know, we're just gonna have to live with the consequences. He'll be out in the first half, and um, he'll be set to play in the second half. Now he could be on the sideline, correct? Sure. Okay. Yep. okay. It's not like it back uh, a few years ago. If someone got called for targeting, got ejected from the game, they had to go to the locker room. Yeah, they changed. And, and, that. and I like that idea because I send a kid to the locker room. I mean, what? what I mean, uh, um, the attitude of your team coming off the field Saturday night? Um, disappointed. You know, I think they were disappointed. I think at, at any point when you have an opportunity to, to be in a ball game with an FBS team and, and, and have a chance to win it, you got to take advantage of it because they just don't – that those just don't come along with the special group of guys. But, you know, their reaction was good, and, and I think it was what, exactly what we needed. We are going to get another break in. Coming to town on Saturday, home opener against Mississippi Valley State. We talk about the Harold Man along with Coach Pete Rosamondo right here at Little Woodrose. We're out here each and every Wednesday night during the duration of the football season. How, how about our turnout here tonight, Coach? How about this crowd, How about huh? Cardinal fans? Come on, Cardinal fans. Yeah. All right. And uh, <clears throat> before we talk about the home opener, a couple final Polishing up, touch-ups on that trip to, uh, trip to San Marcos, rolling in at uh, 4, 4.15 <laughs> in the morning yeah. uh, was not, uh, I mean, that's a long time on a bus. And I know my chauffeur, James Dixon, got me back to the Dolphin Center about uh, 4.15, <laughs> and that's about the time you guys were pulling in as well. Yeah, I heard that uh, you didn't see much of that trip. I did not see. I, much, I did not see much of the trip on the way back. The back of my eyelids did, though. My back of my eyelids saw it quite a bit. Uh, I uh, we got in at 4:15. I yeah. felt like I was in a car crash. Uh, <laughs> my back, my neck, my shoulders, everything hurt. Uh, but you know, got got a couple hours sleep. Got back in in the morning and 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 finished. Uh, you know, doing the the finishing touches on Texas State and any awards and all that good stuff. And then we, you know, then we were on the Mississippi Valley. So yeah. um, it was that, that fast. Do you give them Sunday off? Players get Sunday off, yep. Uh, and that, that's normal every Sunday, players get Sundays off? No. Some people practice Sundays, give them Monday off. But I believe, you know, I believe in them going to church and, yeah. and having some time to themselves and having an opportunity to watch Sunday football. And I think, you know, to have, if you do it on Monday, a day off, that's not really a day off for them. Yeah. It's you know they still got school they still they still want to be in the building and you know I really I really want to try to avoid that. And uh, one one last thing, uh, seven o'clock kickoff in San Marcos. As we know, it's going to be a late night getting back. Some folks did hang out in San Marcos on Saturday night. 
But uh, we had a good representation, a lot of Cardinal fans out there on Saturday. We did. We did. The, you know, Lamar is well represented in the state of Texas, and I'm sure you know that. And uh, I've been around to a bunch of high schools in Metroplex and, and, and in the Waco area, and everybody in those high schools have Lamar degrees. And uh, it's, it's, it's great to see that and great to see him come out and support our players because they deserve it. Our players have worked really hard for it. All right, uh, Mississippi Valley State. Mm -hmm. They come to town. Uh, they come in on, uh, s excuse me, Saturday, and they're coming in off a 41-21 loss to Tennessee State in Nashville. I'm sure you've just been up and down that video of that game. What are they going to show us? Uh, they're they're a dynamic football team on offense. I think they have uh, they have a lot of skill players that can run and, and and catch the ball. And you know they they challenged uh, they challenged uh, Tennessee State down the stretch. And you know we got to do a really good job of keeping those playmakers in front of us. And like I said before, we got to get them on the ground. You know as a defense, it, the most important thing is to get them down. They looked like they played three quarterbacks in that game. They did. You know, I think they got the, the game got away from them a little bit at the end, so they played a couple other guys. But, um, you know, they're going to come in ready to go. And defensively, I think they got really, really good uh, athletes on, on all levels. Their linebackers are super athletic. Um, their D-line is they got some big guys inside, a little bit even bigger than Texas State was. So, uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us, but, um, you know, I think our guys feel like feel good about, like, where they are in, in the process right now. So we got to continue to drive to get better. With the exception of me, you, and James Dixon, let's see if our Lamar fans are paying attention out there. The most famous football player, someone shouted out, to come out of Mississippi Valley State. Well, that was easy. That was easy. Jerry yeah. Rice, the <laughs> Hall of Famer, Jerry Rice. And, yeah. so, and, and someone like a Jerry Rice and even a Walter Payton out of Jackson State, that tells you uh, players at this level, oh, yeah. you know, have the ability to go on and be big-time players on Sunday. There's an HBCU player on every roster in the NFL. That tells you a lot about, uh, about HBCUs. Uh, passing again, Jaden Sisk uh, had 110 yards passing and a touchdown. Reuben Lee, 55 yards passing and a touchdown. I, the rushing game, it looked like uh, – they uh, split it up along, among multiple uh, ball carriers. Yeah, they, uh, that's the problem is you can't get a beat on who they're going to give the ball to. And I think, you know, usually, oh, that's a big back. This is what we got to do. Or they got, you know, they got an athletic guy. This is what we have to do. It's just sometimes it's really hard to hem them in. On the receiving side, uh, a guy by the name of Nathan Rembert uh, led him in yardage, four receptions, 81 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Carrick Ross, six uh, receptions, 74 yards. And a touchdown. So uh, are they the same way? Not really know what direction they're going to go with multiple receivers? Uh, yeah, I think they're going to spread it around for sure. But I think they, they, those two guys can really go. They can, they can run. They can finish. So we, we got to do a really good job of keeping them in front of us, being disciplined in our coverage. And on defense, what kind of setup do you have for that? Do you match up close, play off them a couple yards on the wideout? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, when you line up against them, you're going to play tight on up front at the line, or do you back off a little bit with the uh, corners? And uh, I mean, we we just play our style of defense. I mean, we're we're just going to ad we'll adapt a little yeah. bit to their scheme, but we're going to play our our style of defense, which is multiple and you know, guys going to be going to we're going to pressure at times and we're going to play some coverage at times. It's really hard to get a beat on what we're going to do. You got uh, a lot of uh, freshmen out there and. The True freshmen, and well, we get a look at them. And did you any really uh, contribute uh, this past Saturday? Excuse me, uh, C.J. Miller played a little bit, um, linebacker out of Anna. He was the defensive player of the uh, of the year in his conference. Um, going to be a really good player. We're just you know we're trying to get him acclimated to defense and special teams right now. He's doing a really good job, and um, right you know we may see one or two other guys on Saturday, uh, Cash Cross or. Or, um, Brit, uh, you know, Britt Simmons. So one of those two receivers will probably be out there on the field. With uh, Sammy being out for uh, the first half, who steps up and gets a start? Oh, uh, Ronnie Hamrick. Yeah, Ronnie, who played a lot again. Yeah, you know, did. played a lot last. He was playing. They, they were splitting time at, uh, last week. And, you know, just because it's the first game and that, that position runs a whole lot. So uh, it was good. It was good that we got those guys rotating. Uh, Robert Coleman, uh, again, uh, a good uh, performance, ready to go under center. 
Uh, do you hope that maybe uh, Jacoby Longino might get a chance to get in the game on Saturday? Oh uh, yeah, I mean we're gonna see how the game. He's got he's one play away, so he yeah. better be ready. <laughs> you know, you never know how this thing goes. So hopefully, knock on wood. You know, it's it's a choice, not a not a a, a necessity, but um, you know he's got to be ready. I mean he's in that position. As a tight end, uh, Devin Gibbs had been hurt. I had a chance to meet him on Saturday. Very nice young guy, and uh, if I'm mouthing off in a convenience store, I want him standing beside me. What a frame. That's yeah. a big kid. Yeah, he's he's the greatest. He's an uh, incredible human being, uh, great teammate, uh, great leader. You know, one of the guys that I think everybody respects, including coaches. And, you know, it's great that he's going to be able to come back. I was so, so sad for him when he got hurt. But, yeah. you know, just his, just his mindset, you know, that he was going to be back two weeks earlier than, than they said. And, and, and that looks like the way it's going to be this week, which – you know, just an incredible testament to his work ethic and his determination. I know I know. he hated not being able to suit up on Saturday. did uh, kind of kid with him a little bit, and he cut his eyes at me. And I quit, oh, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I said, <laughs> I said, you know, Texas has a lot of great high school football kids, but none in East Texas. He turns around, <laughs> looks at me and said, we're picking on you, Devin. Uh, and, and he's from a smaller school, and that's what's cool about uh, yeah. him getting here and to get a chance to play. Uh, uh, smaller school, getting a chance to play. And, and you got that up and down your roster. A yeah. lot of kids from uh, smaller schools that are contributing. Yeah, John Hester from mm -hmm. uh, from Hawking. I mean, uh, John, that's, I think they were 1A or 2A. You mm -hmm. know, Isaiah Jones, you know, from Norman G. Well, that, I mean, that's a small a, little school. Yeah, so, yeah. And actually those guys played against each other in the playoffs, which is fun, pretty fun to hear. And John Hester was a tight end and, and caught a pass in the game. So it was, it was you know, because uh, – Isaiah played quarterback. Yeah, so he wasn't even he wasn't even a he wasn't even a receiver. So John caught more passes in the game than Isaiah did. <laughs> That's funny. And you talk about that. Devin played quarterback. Yeah, Devin was quarterback. Yeah. Do they uh, see some of those kids? Uh, and you see this uh, uh, a handful of times where a quarterback, you know, once they finish college, they go sign as a free agent somewhere with an NFL team as a tight end. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I mean, Tim Tebow and, you know, uh -huh. guys like that who were great quarterbacks turned into in the tight ends. And, you know, we actually have a, a tight end committed to us who play who's playing quarterback right now in, in high school. So, um, yeah, it just it's sometimes those things just work out that way. You know, body type, big frames, you know, people want big, strong quarterbacks. And sometimes those guys uh, become great tight ends because they're nimble, they're 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 agile and they're big. We talked about this a little bit last week. Want to touch it on again this week in case someone uh, missed it uh, last week. The NCAA with FBS and FCS did some adjusting to the timetable with, with the transfer portal. Uh, what exactly changed, and are you in favor or not in favor? Nothing's changed um, yet, but I think they're uh, you know they're they're proposing oh, okay, one, this is a one proposal window right now. One window in in December and January. Um, be honest with you, I think that probably be the for roster management would probably be a good thing. Um, not sure it's the best for the student athletes because if they're not starting at the end of spring, they may not have a chance to go anywhere else unless it's a mental health issue or something along those lines. But I do, you know, I, I, I do think we need to shorten the window. I think I don't want to take away opportunities for guys because I do think the portal is a good idea. I just I do really believe that. Uh, for roster management, for the ability to keep your roster intact after spring football, I think it's pretty pretty important. If someone's in the transfer portal, can you contact them once they're in the portal? Yes. How does that work? Yeah, everybody has a uh, working data, uh, working spreadsheet uh, from the NCAA, and, and you can go in there, and their, their phone numbers are in there, and, and contact information. This time of year, of course, you're busy with practice all week, Saturday game days. Uh, just so much going on. Is there recruiting this time of year going to look at high school kids? And if so, how are you able to do that? Yeah, we'll be out Friday night this week, you know, around the local area. And, you know, if we travel, like we play Commerce close to Dallas, we'll be out in Dallas that night. We play in Houston, we'll be out that night, you know. So it's just great opportunities for us to get to places to see people that we're recruiting or that we, we intend to recruit. Um, you know, as this process goes on. Well, if you're ever at Bulldog Stadium in Nederland on a Friday night recruiting, taking a look at somebody, come up to the home broadcast booth. I've got some Butcher's Corner barbecue that you're going to love. 
I love that. I love barbecue. It's one of my favorite things to eat. So. So, and I, I know Dixon, he's, he's going to head out to every Nidoran game now and just get the free <laughs> eats. Uh, but um, how many times a year can you look at a kid? Is there a limit? Yeah, there's five, five evaluations, uh, five contacts. I think you... Uh, you know, now everything's become a contact period. So I think, I think, you know, I think we'll be out to, I think, a two live evaluations. We can go see somebody. So we'll be out to a needling game. We're, we're recruiting some guys from that school. And I'm sure some schools they play, we'll be, that'll be in there. We'll be out to see them. We see some home games where um, you see recruits on the sideline. Is that a, a certain weekend? Certain, I know it's the kids' of official visit. How often can we see that? Uh, we'll see. You'll see them every week. I mean, they'll be any home game. They'll be here, and uh, they can't be on the sideline once the game starts. But um, you know, they have a section in the stands. But um, it's an opportunity for them pregame to come down and see the coaches that are working and watch them interact with the players. It's critical to those decision-making processes. And and uh, Saturday night it is Mississippi Valley State coming to town. It's where you're red. Although I don't need one of them red on right now. Where you're red is a red out. I guess you could say on Saturday night, and um, a wonderful, wonderful legend coach, man, from Lamar University, and many of us in this uh, room know him or knew him, uh, Coach John Payton. And Coach John Payton is going to be honored. His wife and son will be there. Yeah, it's going to be a great, great night. Uh, it's also Letterman Day, so we get the opportunity to have our Letterman out there and, and honor them with, with Coach Payton because a lot of them were inspired or mentor, or molded and, and mentored by Coach Payton. And I never had a chance to meet him, but, man, I know a lot about him. Yeah. And, and I'm just in awe of the type of person he was and the things that he did for other people and changed a lot of lives talking to people. And, and uh, you know, one of the things they talked about was that he was not only a great husband and father and, and, and man of faith, but, man, he was uh, – he was unbelievable to the to the students of Lamar, not just the student athlete. Right. As a as a professor, and uh, heard a lot about that, and you know, just really in awe of all the things that he was able to accomplish here, and uh, you know, very very grateful to Dolly and Gary to allow us to honor him. And, and, and they are wonderful folks as well. They are. His They're, wife is yeah, Miss Dolly. Is, yeah. is incredible. She is, as one alum said to me, grace personified, and that is her. So, without a doubt, I mean, several. Years ago, I'm talking to Coach Payton and talking about the years, you know, not only as a coach, but he also spent in classrooms. Yeah. He tells me one day, he goes, you know, I told every, every one of my students for freshman year, if you don't know the school alma mater song by the end of uh, the school year or the, or the semester, I'm going to flunk you. <laughs> and he said they all learned it. And he looked at me and goes, they had no idea I could not flunk them for that. <laughs> but, that, you know, I, I say that, with, you know, that was his love for Lamar University. He wanted to uh, – and it was not only athletes he was telling that. He was telling general students that as well. Yeah, and that, and that just speaks volumes about who he was. And, and you know, really – and the great part about it is it's, it's, he was the first black coach at Lamar in, in the football program. But not only did he touch black student athletes, white student athletes, Hispanic student athletes, international, Asian student. I mean, every person he came in contact with, he affected their life in a positive way. Not not many people can say that. Right. And, and I'm I hope someday somebody can speak with, speak for me that way, the way they speak for Coach Payton, because that is truly an honor, and that's everything that we as coaches set out to do when we get into this profession, and that is to have an impact on young people's lives. And that he did. And now, we're not talking just uh, former athletes going on to be coaches. We're talking about true professionals in the, as I do the quotation, of the real working world. Uh, and, and we're talking about, uh, you know, maybe going to be a doctor's attorney, things along those lines. Uh, Coach John P Payton impacted their lives. Yeah, I mean, you know, Herb Glass, yeah. uh, Larry, Larry Kinnon. They don't talk about those guys. They talk about Coach Payton. And I'm talking about offensive linemen, defensive linemen, secondary, running backs, mm -hmm. receivers, quarterback. All of them talk to – and they're all they, – they contribute – they attribute their success to what Coach Payton did for them and how he showed them how to, how to become a true professional. So, uh, yeah, kudos to him and his family and – and I had a chance to spend an afternoon with Dolly and, and Gary, and 
you know, had to hear a lot about, you know, his what he did after he retired from uh, Lamar as, as a basketball official and yeah. coming back to Lamar as the he, academic coordinator. He and, was at every home game. I mean, what a what a just an incredible human being. And I'm just we're just so glad to be able to finally honor him the right way uh, at a football game um, with the crowd there. We want a big crowd. We want we want the students there. We want our letterman there just to honor Coach Payton. And uh, not – only uh, Coach Payton, which is just going to be a wonderful ceremony on Saturday, Letterman's Weekend. And, you know, I've talked to you about this in the past, the importance of once a player plays his final game with a Lamar Cardinal and goes on in life, you don't want them just to keep walking. You want them to come back. Yeah. And that even goes beyond when you were a coach here. It goes beyond 2010 when the Lamar brought the football program back. You don't care. If you're Lamar football letterman, you want them coming back. I think it starts with uh, success. It starts with accessibility. It starts with reaching out, returning phone calls. You know, some things that in the past haven't happened, and we want to make sure we, we fulfill those uh, those things for our, our alums and our letter winners because they're, they're so critical for our student athletes now currently to see the success of Lamar football players both – in the NFL, the CFL, in life, in, in being a father, being a husband, you know, being a, an incredible uh, member of the business community. Those things are critical for us, and we want to make sure we get those guys around them and impact our players in a positive way. Plus, you know, everything's about networking and having give, giving them a chance to, to be around our, our alumni for networking opportunities. You know, you have so many former players come back, even from 2010, those first few years, but especially from uh, 89 and before, they're just awed with the facilities when they walk on this campus. Not only the, the academic buildings, the, the dorms, uh, the football facilities, uh, they're really um, impressed with how it's changed, and some of them have something to do with it. They do, yeah. But one of the things I'll say is, uh, you know, we have an all-star cast. I think it starts with Dr. Taylor, and, mm -hmm. it, and, it, and, it, and it trickles down to all of us. And, and I think that, um, you know, we, we've just recently upgraded our team room and our weight room, and that will be dedicated this season. And, and uh, you know, we're working on the locker room next. And we already have what I would consider a top facility in FCS football, and it's only going to get better. And it's because of the generosity of our alumni and our and our our former letter winners that are giving us the opportunity to be able to do that, and uh, we're excited about it. Our weekly uh, coaches press conference on Mondays, your conference room for your players, and that you redid that entire thing. This it looks pretty sharp. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's it's you know, and and you haven't even seen the the upgrades to the to the uh, technology, which uh, that'll be unveiled this week, and that is just, I mean, it's state of the art. It is it is cutting edge, and and we feel really great about giving our players really, you know, we want to give them a, a, a great space to learn, and I think that, those are great spaces to learn. What happens on a Saturday morning on the, at home during a 6 o'clock kickoff? We usually eat brunch together, then we'll go out and do a special teams walkthrough and do some meetings and walkthroughs, and then, uh, you know, they'll get a, a little break in between to go get off their feet and uh, come back for pregame meal. And then we, we do our cardinal walk where we walk over to the stadium and, you know, welcome to come out and uh, cheer the guys on. It's fun. It's, it's a fun, actually really great for our guys. And then, um, you know, we head over to the facility and we get ready for the game. You know, guys like to get there early, you know, get warmed up. And so, and, and it looks like it's going to be like a fall weather day. It's going to yeah. be like in the 80s. So. Oh, it's going to be perfect football weather yeah. on kickoff on Saturday. Our staff meter, all just Greg Boss, would guarantee it. Guarantee it. I love it. I will talk about, uh, we got about four and a half minutes to go. For the home game, we do have a lot of local kids uh, on this Lamar football team. Do they get a chance to go watch their high school play a little bit on Friday? Or do you like them getting getting in that uh, bed early? Yeah, we're, we're, we're in bed early. I mean, not early, but they can, they can go watch their high schools. But uh, we have a team, team function on uh, Friday night, uh, team meal, and, you know, we have some fellowship and, you know, we, we talk about the game and things that are important to us, and then, and then we let them go and, 
Uh, we let those guys have an opportunity to go go get off their feet and get to bed. But, you know, it's just, with it being a night game, it's not as critical for them to be in bed by 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock. So. And, of course, the uh, pregame and halftime performance is a showcase of Southeast Texas, the best band in the land. They're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really, really good. And, uh, you know, I get a chance before the game, they come into the stadium and they warm up and they practice. And I, yeah. I got a chance to watch the – just the way it, it, – it's like running a, a very complicated offense. I mean, the way they move the, the yeah. people around and get into formations. and uh, It's pretty cool to watch. Uh, you walk out, uh, come down the hill, uh, coming onto the field, I'd fall on my face. <laughs> uh, you kind of watching your feet go down that hill when you're coming down? Are you, are you locked in with a couple of players, I believe, arm in arm, aren't you? Uh, no, not when, once, the, once the cannons go off, we're out. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm – uh, you know, with major surgery in the off season, I'm gonna I'm gonna take it maybe a little slower on the way down this year, and I'll let the guys go out and lead the way. Uh, between now, here we are Wednesday night, a couple of minutes before eight o'clock. Between now and kickoff, what happens? Uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. So we uh, we got practice in the morning, and uh, we got uh, you know obviously recruiting next tomorrow as a as a as a staff, and we have academic evaluations of all our players, and then. You know, Friday, we don't bring our guys in until the afternoon. We give them an extended break, and then we, uh, you know, we roll about 2 o'clock on Friday, and we get rolling. And we got walkthrough, and we got, uh, you know, all kinds of meetings for special teams and, and, and position meetings and unit meetings. And, and uh, just really right now after uh, tomorrow's practice, it all becomes mental preparation. There's no more physical training. All right, uh, Coach, again, the first of three in a row at home, and we can learn a lot about your team playing at Provost Humphrey the next three Saturdays. Yeah, come on and watch. They're going to be fun. And, and this weekend, I guarantee you better get – if you want to see action, you better get there early. So Yeah, with Mississippi Valley State coming in. And then next week, nationally ranked Weber State. And then that's followed by another SWAC school uh, with uh, Texas Southern. Then it's up to Conway, Arkansas. And then before you know it, Southland Conference play will be here, and you've got uh, four more games before that. Yeah, the most important game right now is this one. And that's how it goes, absolutely. Well, Coach, as always, thank you uh, so much for stopping by again. Uh, start of the season last week on the road against Texas State here at Provo Humphrey Stadium, 409-880-1715. Contact the Lamar Ticket Office and uh, just get out there and support our kids, and that, that's very important. Yeah, it's important. It's Southeast Texas. It's exactly what everybody's wanting. It's football, right? And that's what Southeast Texas is all about. All right, folks, that's going to about do it for us here at Little Woodrose. Do want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. Uh, again, we're back here each and every Wednesday night. Tell everybody about it. It's a lot of fun. 7 o'clock Wednesday night, our host is Little Woodrose right over here on Phelan near the Dallin Road intersection. Come on out, support your Cardinals. And as always, it's uh, game day, game night, next three at home, then to Conway. And then once we get to conference, uh, you can go to every game. Uh, you can jump in a car on a Saturday, go four hours. That's about the longest trip. Greatest part about being in the Southland Conference. A bus league. That's right. All uh, right, Coach, thank you. We will see you Saturday with a 6 o'clock kickoff at Provo Summer Stadium. We'll be there. All right, folks, get out. See your Cardinals on Saturday. Thank you for everybody showing up today. For Lamar University coach Pete Rosamondo show here on News Talk 560 KLVI. Again, Cardinals and Mississippi Valley State coming up Saturday at 6. Come on out to the stadium, support your Lamar Cardinals.